Welcome back to the talk with Wafana Palani. We are in Midrand, Johannesburg, South Africa. Uh, this is the show where we speak about different things that affect us differently in life. We speak about education, politics, religion, social issues, and everything that affects us, especially the young people in South Africa. So today with me, there's a, there's a man who's not new in the show. <laughs> His name is uh, Vaughan Perry. Uh, he is not where he was the last time I spoke to oh, him. Yes. So he will tell us where he is now and what he does. Mr. Vaughan Perry. Ah, Commander, how are you doing? Buffy, you. Buffy. It's yeah. always beautiful being with you, man. Yeah. You know it. Yeah. Um, uh, as I told you, I missed you and I needed to come back here. Of course, of course. Um, yeah. So let me just start by saying hello to everybody. Yeah. Uh, my name is Vaughan Perry. Yeah. Um, and maybe just explain who I am. Yeah. I was about that. Um, my name is Vaughan Perry. I'm a young man from um, Pretoria. Mm -hmm. I'm an academic. Yeah. All right. So formerly, I think when I was here, I was still with the University of the Witwatersrand. Yeah. So um, what I do basically, I'm an academic within the space of health sciences, right? I'm an academic in the anatomical sciences, which is basically the study of the human body. All right. So finished my master's, currently doing my PhD, uh, but currently with uh, SMU, former Medunsa, right? It's Fakomakato University, and still looking into our research. Um, in the field of non-communicable diseases. Yeah. So that's basically my, my, my research point of view. Um, I'm looking at the human body. I'm trying to understand the functions of the human body. And particularly, I'm trying to understand the functions of the human body as associated to non-communicable diseases. Yeah. You know, your particularly chronic diseases, um, your diabetes, um, your um, osteoporosis, you know, your um, fetal alcohol syndrome as well. So those are my research areas of research, uh, areas of interest within research. Yeah. Okay. Tell me about the difference between where you were and where you are now. It's a very interesting one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I actually don't even want to. Okay. Yeah. But, um, you know, obviously the University of the Vetvatazarant is a very well established yeah. um, institute like, well, for higher education, you know, and if you oppose it to your uh, currently Sfako Makato, which is going through this sort of rebranding and this sort of new reimagining of itself. You know, um, you come towards a, a sort of a newborn baby still being sort of birthed with Sfako Um Although I think it's legacy within the medical and health sciences space, you know, particularly for black people, is something that should never, you know, we should never overlook. You know, it is, it is well, well, well ingrained within the space, uh, particularly in Pretoria, you know, I, I wouldn't be able to speak for the rest of South Africa, but particularly in Pretoria, um, former, Medu was Makato, former Medunsa um, is, is well ingrained, you know, within our, um, our public health spaces and yeah. stuff like that, yeah. All right, thank you, thank you for that. Uh, w uh, let's go straight to our topic. Yeah. Yeah, soft life, right. a Trojan horse of chronic diseases. diseases. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. All right, so, okay, so firstly, Buffy, and, and that's why I love this space and always having this conversation with okay. you, um, yeah. is that as much as I, you know, I if I can even maybe just um, give myself the ratings there yeah. and, and maybe say speak maybe from an area of expertise within the health sciences space. Yeah. Um, particularly what I, what I like about coming to the space about is that, you know, one can always throw on their social commentator hat. Yes. You know, and just, yeah. and, and, and just throw on the, that space of social commentary. So I think, firstly, this conversation we're going to be having from that point of view. Right. You know, so from a social commentary, particularly as well for the listeners as a home, at home, to also maybe just you know, start sort of juggling these thoughts around their minds, start really thinking about about um, these sort of issues, right? So we'll be taking this point from a social commentary point of view. Also, maybe to also just stress that none of what we'll be discussing is, is, is um, clinical medical advice, yeah. right? Um, it is more of our opinions and particularly questions yes. in this regard. So let's talk about soft life, the Trojan horse for chronic disease. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a funny... It's a funny thing in the social media, you yeah. know, it's, it's used by people who are saying we, we also deserve Soft life. To, yeah. have it, the, this to, to have it easy, <laughs> yeah. you know, one of those days where we work for things, yeah. and we sweat and yeah. stuff, we, I just want those things that we couldn't mm -hmm. afford before, mm. let's just indulge you know, and, uh, and, and, I, and, I, and I quickly threw on a search, I think an online search, I was yeah. like, what is, what, what is this soft life? Um, first few things I thought, I, I saw, saw it being just opposed with, with, with hard life. Um, Right, so it being the the, diet, the polar opposite of hard life, yeah. um, that'll be soft life. Okay, but also I think one online resource had, had, had defined it as a life um, filled with 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 with, with uh, affluence. No, it was a life filled with ease 
and then, then yeah f life filled with ease basically yeah right so i was like okay and life filled with ease with comfort i was like okay so now and uh, you know we're just seeing all of this everywhere soft life soft life soft life soft life you know and i was like okay um as maybe from the health science point of view i was like what are what are some of the, the effects? Because, you know, as people, sometimes we go through things and these things happen to us, you know. And I think sometimes we ought to remove ourselves from it and be able to just retrospective, not even retrospectively, but sort of objectively, you know, evaluate, yeah. you know, what is happening. And what has very, been very clear, okay, so from this conversation as well, what we'll sort of use interchangeably as well, the idea is that soft life to some extent of it, you know, and this is us maybe also throwing an assumption out there, to some extent, um, is is an would be maybe an urban lifestyle lived out to to its peak. Yeah. You know, so we we could maybe say that is um, a sort of soft lifestyle, yeah. an urban lifestyle lived out to its peak, urban lifestyle or Western lifestyle, right? And so now, when you look at the physical health space, okay. So firstly, when you look at yeah, when you look at the health space, one thing that is clear, right, throughout f f for researchers all over is that. With, with urbanization has come certain health complications as well, right? Looking at the, the community or the society within that uh, health space, right? There's come certain complications. Now, you know, you can, you can go through it back as, as far back. You know, these complications have always particularly been, uh, normally, um, I think, within urban spaces, uh, particularly after the, um, the, the, the pandemic, the AIDS pandemic, and around the time as well, I think, when cocaine also started in. So particularly around this, from the 70s, 90s, within urban areas, we had infectious diseases just being really, really, really prominent, right? But then now you moved then into maybe uh, sort of the latter part of the 20, uh, 20th century, and you come into a space where now you're having this demographic of urban um, people now starting to have more chronic diseases sort of displaying with them. You know, what, what, what they call the double burden of disease, yeah. with particularly within urban spaces, is that not only now do you have these infectious diseases and the, the likes to deal with within your public health space, but now you need to also deal with the burden of chronic disease. You know, these are your diabetes, this is your cardiovascular diseases, you know, hypertension and the likes, you know. So now you need to deal with, with those two things. So that was the trend that was already seen. So it, it was already clear, even though um, the exact factors about urbanization and urban lifestyle, yeah. you know, that cause these sort of health issues were never really particularly, you know, they, they were sparsely understood. But it was clear that there was this change within yeah. the urban community, right? So now I'm looking at this conversation, I'm looking at this conversation, you know, soft life, and we're looking at this conversation, soft life, and it just then has to prompt the question to us, you know, is that what are the effects of this life that we are aspiring to currently, you know, this lifestyle, right? If we've already seen through our generations that there are certain health changes that come, you know, with, 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 with um, an urban or westernized lifestyle, you know, one of the one of the key change, one of the key things as well. You'd also realize throughout sub-Saharan Africa, we might not necessarily have the highest um, stats in terms of like diabetes and the likes, but we are definitely sub-Saharan Africa definitely has some of the the highest um, increase rates. Yeah. You know, of of such occurrences. You know, um, so this has to really start to like you know start to fire um, those 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 thoughts. And this is just within the physical health space. You know. Um, we still need to also then consider the mental health space, you know, and um, a lot of research and a lot of articles also goes into maybe discussing, you know, the effects and, 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 and the certain profile that we're noticing yeah. within our populations in an urbanized space, you know, the rise in mental health disorders, the rise in depression, the rise in anxiety, you know, all those things, like, although we might see them happening as isolated to some extent, although not solely affected by urbanization, right? To some extent, this has to have an effect on it. Yeah. Right. So now the question is then to us, like it's particularly our generation, because we're the generation of soft life. Come on, everybody wants a soft life. We're the generation of soft life. Yeah. You know, you, you ask ourselves, what are these effects, particularly that we see? And I think maybe that's the conversation we're having today. Is yeah. that what are some of the effects that we, we we would possibly see? You know, particularly in the generations coming, particularly Generation Z, because I think whatever effects we might maybe see within our generation these might be ampl amplified uh, within the next generation, you know. So I think those are the questions that we need to start asking, that what are these particular effects? You know, already we can understand that um, in terms of chronic diseases, diabetes, cardiovascular, this is on the rise. Yeah. This is on the rise. That is very clear. Yeah. So what, what, what is the, the role of, of, of academics in mm -hmm. influencing social spaces? Because yeah. 
my fear with 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 the social space mm. is that people are being fed information yeah uh, that is not verified mm. we follow certain people yeah we follow trends we follow and that was very common particularly with this pandemic right yeah. where we, we followed, had yeah. information that was not verified yeah. you know and, and, and the yeah. like we follow we follow mm. different people mm. different trends and stuff that actually affect us mm. directly mm. and this is some information that is not verified and you know right so and i think that's unfortunately okay for the lay person particularly it's gonna obviously be very hard to get into yeah. certain like um um, nitty gritties into, yeah. into, into like particularly in certain fields, right? So I'll only particularly understand a certain bit of yeah. engineering. Yeah, you know, I can be like as a layperson, yeah. there's certain things I would never really be, be able to understand. But I think the role of, of 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 academia is exactly that, you know, to 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 be able to bring forth more knowledge in terms of the understanding, right? And and then give more complete understanding of certain um, things we're going through, right? So for example, if I look at my work, uh, working with diabetes. Um, um, alcohol and um, uh, antiviral uh, therapy, right? And looking at the effect of these particular three things um, on bone, right? I'm looking at it at the molecular level, how this affects bone. Although these things are understood individually, right? There's still a sort of porosity in information in terms of how these affect, uh, like how these um, combined, like the, what the combined effect would be, right? Particularly if you're looking at a, at a country like South Africa where in terms of alcohol consumption, we're like right there at the top, right? We look at, um, in terms of the numbers of HIV, right there at the top, so therefore we have a very expensive um, antiretroviral uh, yeah. therapy thing, uh, program. Uh, you look at our chronic uh, diseases, diabetes and the likes, you know, we, we, we're also on the rise in that, in that regard. So it's very important to start maybe thinking about then the effects of these three things together. You know, so that is, like I'm just using my sort of particularly field, my particular field as, as a, as an example, but that is basically the role of an academic, right? You just, you are supposed to provide information in that sphere of life, yeah. you know, of society to just inform decisions particularly. You're, you're, you're mentioning uh, lifestyle diseases. Yeah. yeah. You're mentioning diabetes and, and the next, yeah. what in our lifestyle mm. causes that? Right, so exactly. Yeah. I think that's when, we, yeah. like, let's start now, that is the soft life yeah. chat. And by the way, um, also Bafi, I think maybe, let's also maybe be clear to say that we're not saying that soft life is just, uh, limited to urban lifestyle, right? Yeah. One can have an urban lifestyle that is soft life. I mean, a lifestyle that is soft life, but not urban at all, or yeah. westernized. So we're not limit limiting it to that, but we're just saying that, particularly in the majority, when when a soft life is, is, is imagined, it's imagined through the urban lens, right? The urban lens. Um, so firstly, what has been noted uh, throughout, like, urbanized, like, um, societies going through urbanization, especially the change in diet, right? Um, the change in diet, uh, we're tending to more saturated fats and the likes. Um, the change in activity. Um, we live more sedentary lifestyles. You know, uh, uh, if you we, 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 everybody has a car. You know, that's yeah. the, everybody has a car. If not a car, there are there's ample commuting um, uh, means. So one does not really walk or do anything. So the lifestyle is quite sedentary. You know, you mix that with with a diet that is high in saturated fats and the likes already. You know, you, you're starting to change sort of your, your microenvironment, but particularly in terms of nutrients. Mm. And now that results in, you know, in, in, in certain things. And I think for me, the, the particular thing was that these particular changes that we're talking about that um, could, you know, uh, predispose these conditions. These particular changes are changes that we see as positive changes. Yeah. You know, um, when you imagine, you know, the perfect lifestyle for yourself, you don't imagine yourself walking distances and you know doing of you course, don't yeah. you don't imagine that you know <laughs> you imagine the most comfortable yeah. lifestyle for yourself and that is the idea of soft life you know well imagined especially for me that was the idea of soft life is that you know it's it's this life of comfort this life of ease mm. this life of sedentary mm. lifestyle you know um i mean you go now you go onto your instagram and you just search soft life, lifestyle and just see the images that come up mm. you know um champagne champagne and the likes you know and yeah. all of that has an impact on health and if this is the, the, the image that society is looking at and, and aspiring to, then therefore we must also then take time to sort of imagine then the sort of, you know, um, health, um, health uh, ecosystem we're going to be creating, yeah. you know, along with that sort of lifestyle. All right. Let us go to the break and we'll, we'll, we'll get come back, back and continue. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, we are still with the talk uh, on Galaxy Universal Network. Be with us and comment on our social media platforms and we'll continue when we come back.
Hello. Being a legal practitioner in South Africa in these challenging times demands lawyers that will help clients beyond legal issues. The ever-changing demands in commerce and tourism require lawyers who have sound and clear business and commercial knowledge. And that's where MB Chavangu Incorporated comes in. Our business, mining, tourism, health, labor, and economic knowledge encapsulated with law and litigation experience gives us an advantage in the legal sphere. Our experience in assisting businesses, government, and various industries with their needs puts us amongst the many progressive and striving law firms in South Africa. Now, to contact our attorneys for assistance with any of the mentioned fields and others, please call us on 012-341-4187 or send us an email on admin at chabanku.co.za and be Chabanku Incorporated, where problems meet solutions. Welcome back to the talk with Bafana Palani. We are talking about soft life and how it brings about chronic diseases. Mm. So we are commenting on the social trends, you know, but we are talking to an academic, so mm. we are there and here at the same time, you know. Mm. We are trying to balance because <laughs> uh, even the social spaces need some credible information. Social spaces need some uh, information that will help us. They, there's really no need for us to go with the trends and endanger our lives. So if you are there, listen to us and we'll be talking about this particular point, lifestyle diseases. Mm -hmm. Morgan. Yeah. Let's go. All right. So I think, yeah, maybe just continuing on that, you know, because then I think maybe then the question then becomes that why is this of importance to us, you know? And I think particularly for maybe a developing country, you know, or one of the biggest plagues, um, maybe if, if I may maybe go yeah. this way in, instead, one of the biggest issues um, amongst um, African states, you know, is that. Um, Obviously, we've always had the issue of infectious diseases yeah. at the top. You know, we've always had that issue. We've always had the issue of malnutrition. Uh, we've had the issue of, well, not always, because yeah. in truth, I don't believe Africans were starving before yeah. colonization. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I think people were well fed. Yeah. Uh, but there's always been uh, post colonial uh, Africa, we have issues of malnutrition. Um, there's always an issue in terms of. Um, uh, commodities in terms of um, childbirths and 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 thing and then the likes, you know. And then there was always chronic diseases. Now, within Africa, the issue is that because we're dealing with this burden, and that's why we have the double burden of, of, of diseases. That we're already dealing with the burden of infectious diseases. Mm. That's your malaria. That's your tuberculosis. That's your HIV, you know, and the likes. So, to whatever extent that we can minimizing the chronic diseases. I remember one of the sort of like uh, definitions of chronic diseases. These are diseases that are basically going to last for a lifetime. Yeah. Most of them will yeah. go last for a long time, last lifetime, more than one year, you know. So these really, really reduce um, reduce one's life, right? So, and then and, and one of the things, particularly within the health sciences they like to use is, 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 is um, D-A-Y-Ls, um, uh, right? So these are um, uh, disability, age, um, disability, um, age, and yeah, yeah, age in years. Yeah, basically, the the eight, the number of years um, reduced um, in one's life yeah. due to disabilities and sickness, right? Um, so, and if you look at that, the, the, the effect of chronic diseases is is, is is quite huge. You know, in terms of in terms of the number of of years that one has in a life, healthy life, and now that not only just directly impacts the health system in terms of um, the direct burden it puts on it. Of which the direct burden is a lot, firstly, right? Of chronic diseases, like you go through all of them, osteoporosis and the likes. The burden is a lot already on the health system. 
But now the issue is that not only does it directly affect the health system, it indirectly as well affects our economy. Because you must remember all these years that you're removing mm. from these people, mm. Mm. right, active years. These are people that could be actively, right, contributing, contributing. to the economy. Right, so now all these lives and all these years of lives are taken away because of chronic diseases. And medical bill, of Medi course. Medical bills as well, you know. that So now that, that is the direct if yeah. effect of, 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 of these chronic diseases. So particularly for a state like, you know, for, for, for states like uh, we have in Africa, it is important for us to try, you know, try by all means to curb, you know, the, 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 the sort of uh, the, 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 the damage that we will find from... from those sort of chronic diseases, and particularly within those those lifestyle diseases, that can literally be be stopped or literally be be, be you know be be, be slowed down, yeah. you know, by by just changes in lifestyle. So I think that is the importance of a, that conversation, and you know, and it's one thing as well, you know, if we go back to the idea of the soft life uh, coming in, yeah. is that we must not only um, maybe it's, it's it's important for us not to only look at the negative side of, of it of it right or the negative side of the sort of yeah. urban and sort of socialized lifestyle that we see on social media yeah. one of the things that we see really prominent throughout social media one of the things that have really like just started jumping up is health media as well in the social media space everybody's trying to go to gym everybody's trying to fetch their body everybody's trying to get a summer body you know so there is this sort of hyper focus as well within yeah. our urban spaces that that says yo let's 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 try to figure out our lives yeah. let's try to figure out our lives you know and that and that is beautiful you know and 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 also what that shows us is that there is a sense sense of consciousness within our people that says man listen we ought to we ought to to some extent you know start to drive our lives in this particular uh, way of, of health yeah. and i'll say this Bafana, as well is that I truly believe that one of the biggest currencies, you know, in the years to come will be health. health. You know, and I think this is one thing that this pandemic has showed us. This pandemic has showed us that you can have everything, you know, but health is available. truly valuable. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and I think that is the importance. If we find, and as we clearly see from our youth, you know, if you, if you just look at our, you know, our, our, our social spaces, that our youth does have a sense of interest in their health to some extent, yeah. you know. So therefore, it is important for us to now start really understanding our lifestyle and the effects that will have in the future for us, particularly for our young yeah. generation. So, so, but my fear is, how, how do we locate this vision mm. in, in, in a society mm. that is profit-driven? Yeah. 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 That wow. is, when, when we speak of the uh, medication, wow. we're speaking up wow. about the biggest, uh, one of the mm. biggest uh, mm. industries mm. Uh, in the world mm. so w when you push he a healthy lifestyle uh, who's sponsoring the counter because there's someone who's making money yeah. from the fact that people are sick so how how, how do we locate it here in the in, state? in in in, yeah. in 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 the true sense yeah. of an urban urbanite yeah. myself i will use the words of an urban poet okay <laughs> okay he said they killed Dr. Sebi because he was teaching health. Yeah. Those words have always been one of the most profound words. That was Nipsey Hussle, by yeah. the way. Some of the most profound words that you've ever heard. They killed him because he was preaching health. There is, unfortunately, the, the yeah. money in pharma as well, you know, and the money within our, and the political, yeah, um, the po political discourse as well within the health space that yeah. we, cannot, we, can never, we can never overlook. But I think it is important to still try and push the conversation for the sake of our people and our communities yeah. you know for the sake of our people and our communities because i won't lie i i I've, i i remember for the past yeah two years three years you know I've, I've been you know really focusing on being around home and you know i'd sit there with my grandmother i remember the first time i, I was around she's like i need to go get my pills in the hospital i said okay let me go relax let me go you know but then i walked in there and i could see all these elderly women there all of them to come to get their pills you know and also the mere fact that they were there by themselves also showed me something that I also started to see myself because if I wasn't there my grandmother would go for herself yeah. but which is because the people around her which are normally grandchildren and children are also going on about their lives so yeah. they do not really necessarily have the means to actually all the time yeah. to actually focus Humanization is right? taking place yeah. right so they don't necessarily have the time to actually isolate and actually take care of, of this person's health but one thing that was clear for me I was like wow man you know, if there was some sort of discourse that could educate all these people, you know, at home, because you have you have their grandchildren or whatever who are just maybe just at home, 
probably also maybe uh, not educated, maybe you know, thinking about the social economics uh, space then. Probably not employed, yeah. you know. Um, so they do not really understand how to take care of this person. Mm. And now, what ends up happening, like literally you go to these hospitals on these days and you just see all these women there coming to get their pills. By the way, they, with these, they must get these pills for free, right? And I don't know if you've seen an old lady. Those people are probably on like 10 different pills. Mm. You know, there's one for pain, there's one for bones, there's one for whatever. Mm. You know, there's one for hypertension, there's one for everything. And you can see the burden that this has on, on, on our, on our um, health system. So you start to think to yourself that, there are certain things that, you know, not will, will not alleviate this burden, but will certainly try and make it lighter. And these certain things are just lifestyle changes that if we were to be able to educate, you know, our communities, you know, maybe on those days, all those women that are, all those elderly women that are there, you know, take time to just ask them to bring their grandchildren, grandkids on those days. Then that day, just on that day, you know, there's a take a girl child home, take a girl child to work day on that day. Take leave from work and go with your mother or your grandmother to the hospital and just find out what's happening with the condition, you know. And on that day, maybe just find people. You know, you always have you you always have uh, medical students. You know, fourth, third year, whatever. Take them. T take time from take. You know, just give time. Go sit down with these elderly people to just take them through s just basics. You know, we're not saying let's make sure that they're nurses and doctors after this. Let's give them basis of what changes they could make in their lifestyle that would just end up giving them more longevity. Yeah. It helps the government, it helps our country at the end of the day. Yeah. So uh, now, you know, tell me about, uh, you know, the government has programs. Mm. The government has uh, visions mm. uh, about how life must be better. Mm. But e even in that midst, you know, there is, uh, there are different role players. Yeah. yeah there are different role players, mm. and that uh, that actually affects the outcome mm. of of whatever we want to achieve. So, wh what do you think is the most important role player when it comes to the health of the society? Mm. Because you know there are people who deliver just mm. deliver things. There are people who who take care of the elderly. There are people mm. who take care of hospitals. Maybe the problem is at the hospital, or the mm. problem is at uh, the, at the policy level. Yeah. What What are some of some the, of the issues, issues that are there? Uh, that are there you that affect our lifestyle, especially in the medical in the medical space, yeah. right? And you know why? I I, I want to take this uh, approach for a particular reason because I believe I believe that the government needs to provide certain things for us, yeah. you know. But I also, to some extent, understand that logistically it might not be possible yeah. to just provide proper health provide, care to everybody. Provide, yeah. To everybody, I understand as well. Logistically, might not be possible. So, therefore, my approach to to, to this idea or to this thought is not one that is centered around. No, it's not a top-down approach to it. You know, my, my my approach says, okay, whatever. Okay, may, okay, maybe initially, whatever powers that be, try and empower the people at the bottom, yeah. so that they can have healthier lifestyles. So they don't have to then depend on this health system, mm. which will then burden it, and of which now we then have to uh, rely on the government to then strengthen this health system to help them. Mm. You see, now we have too many moving parts to control. Yeah. You know, but what you can do, you can go straight to the people. And obviously, we understand there's still infectious diseases. There's still so many other diseases to deal with, right? That will not be had handled by just change, changing lifestyle. Mm. But we're just saying for those few, we can definitely approach the people and just say. Here's some tips. Here's these things, you know, and that's the, and, and the idea. I think at the core of it, what I'm trying to say is that let's sort of decentralize mm. this sort of um, let's decentralize our, our approach. Yeah, you know, you know, to, to just treating our communities to some extent and and put some of the responsibility in their own hands yeah. to say it is your life. You know, the what you do with your body does matter. Yeah, the funny thing is that you know all the basics we knew mm. as Africans are now become dormant. You know, we. We are chasing this life that is actually has mm -hmm. uh, that has a negative impact on, us. on our on our lives. Mm -hmm. Like as Africans, there's a certain lifestyle we are chasing, and it is a, it is a lifestyle that even in Europe mm -hmm. people are trying to run away from it. Yeah. You know, people are saying let's be vegan. Yeah. But in Africa, in Africa <laughs> we, we, know, we are going yeah. towards it. I, I had a friend. Mm -hmm. I had a friend who who was once deemed a prophet okay. because of how he used to heal people. Okay. So she, well, she actually. Mm. So, you know, you know, in in the remote areas, mm. whenever you you do something extraordinary, mm. people will tend to give you attention, and all of a sudden oh, yeah, you yeah. become a hero. So, 
she took like the elderly women in the mm. community to come and camp at her house. Mm. And then uh, she said, I'm going to give you water and this water is prayed for. Mm. That's what she did because she knows that people believe in and things that are yeah, prayed for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she, she didn't do that. <laughs> so she's like, uh, the water that I'm giving you today, mm. you're not supposed to drink it tomorrow. tomorrow. So, so you have to finish, finish it yeah. today. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, <laughs> I would give them two liters of water. Mm for a month mm. after a month that disease is gone hypertension mm. gone you know and and man these are some of the, the basics, basics you know, you know yeah. some of the basics um and obviously listen man there are certain genetic predisposers to certain things and we're not saying that's gonna yeah you're just drinking water will yeah. take all of that away of course, no, of man, course, yeah. no no we're not yeah. saying that but we are genuinely saying you know Bavana, sometimes if you go into you know like into our people and understand and understand the the, the lack of knowledge you know the lack of knowledge in terms of how to keep themselves out. Like you think about it, you know, if somebody owned a car, they would understand exactly how they need to go about maintaining the car. They understand, hey man, when is the last time I put fuel in this car? When is the last time I put oil in this car? The tire pressure is- It is their burden you know, to find out. Exactly, yeah. it is yeah. their burden as well because yeah. they need to, they need to, but- Because one you, mistake, mm, you lose the whole car. Exactly, Yeah. but people do not treat their bodies in the same way. You know, we just function off of default. Well, I woke up today, okay. Yeah. Well, hopefully if I go to sleep tonight, I'll and wake up coffee, tomorrow again. take a pill. And take a pill. And you know, that's the other thing as well, the issue around around black communities, you know, um, something like so-called called health-seeking behavior. Yeah. You know, we have a very terrible health-seeking behavior. A black person has a pain, will sit it out for months until he sees that I can't anymore now. You know, they'll try yeah. everything. They'll come to Bafan, eh, Bafan. It happened at that thing. Bafan will be like, no, man, ah, I used to have that thing. You know what? Ah, with that thing, I just drank. What, 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 I was fine. You know, until that doesn't work, then they go to somebody else and they don't. Before they've exist, exhausted all of those options, and then they realize, okay, now I need it's to. A professional. Not even I, 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 I. You know, somebody has to take them to the hospital yeah. because actually, at this point, it's almost like too late. Yeah. Our health, seek, our help uh, seeking behavior is very terrible. But you can see, we're just very lax. You yeah. know, we're very lax and very um, passive. Yeah. You know, about, about our own health. Mm. I think that is the biggest issue. Yeah. Really. How, how how has uh, urbanization mm. uh, uh, affected our mindset? I understand it affects our lives mm. directly. It also affects our bodies. You know, mm. we no longer mm. walk long distances. So yeah. We no longer do things with our bodies. Mm. We just sit in the office and we work yeah. and stuff. But how has that affected our mindset? Our mindset, right? Yeah. And then, um, okay, can I please then link this back to our conversation about soft life? Yeah. The aspiration to this kind of particular life. Mm. You know, um, I think, excuse me, I think if we look at what is, you know, what, what in terms of the urban lifestyle and the Western lifestyle. So firstly, the Western lifestyle, one of, one, of, one, of, one of the major things about a Western sort of society is, is the idea of individualism. Yeah. You know, that's one of the biggest ideas of a Western lifestyle. So firstly, that in its own is, makes it, creates an issue yeah. for, for, for a human, you know, who, who, who I believe innately is not designed to be, be alone, yeah. <laughs> you know, to be individualistic. In the end, together, yeah, yeah, you know, we, we do not is, uh, exist in, in isolation. So I think firstly that is one of the maybe the, 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 the issues there. And I also want us to then continue this conversation with, uh, with, uh, with a clinical psychologist because I also think there are just so many other aspects of it to, to, to um, explore. Yeah. But I think coming back to the soft life issue, um, you know, the constant imagery of this life, you know, that everybody else is living, has always sort of like, well, not always, um, has, it has this effect that we sort of see within our generation now and, our, and, our, and in our society now, um, particularly um, the, as the millennials and in the sort of generations coming after us, um, the increase in anxiety, you know, um, constantly looking at somebody's life as this great thing, you know, sort of sometimes you, st you might start devaluing, you yours. know, the, the yours. You know, maybe feel that maybe my yours is not as adequate. Good you know, yeah. So that already creates a sort of depression. But now, also now, every day you wake up, you wake up trying to uh, attain to the standard of living that you're seeing every day. You know, the soft life, yeah. unrealistic. That creates your anxiety. You know, and I think these some of the th biggest things we will have seen that the mental health issues. I think we look at sub-Saharan um, countries once again. We've always had um, your infectious diseases, as I mentioned at the top. Um, chronic diseases we've seen uh, a sort of them coming Rising up, it. coming up the ranks, you know, to, 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 to you know to feature in some of the um, 
um, the causes of death or the causes of um, disability there. And then now also what we're realizing, what we're seeing is the issue of mental health as well, moving up the ranks, mm. you know, throughout our sub, um, sub, I think, sub, um, sub-Saharan African countries. We've seen this issue of mental health coming up. You know, and not only in that, also in urban spaces, particularly after the advent of sort of like the social media um, uh, advent. So this is after what, 2010, 2012, mm -hmm. you know, when we started having this peak in social media, and now we all of a sudden see this space, you know, where we have all these mental health issues. So I think mentally, that's some of the eff effects that I think from, you know, just maybe yeah. looking at it objectively, yeah. we can start to see that, wow, man, we are generally a more anxious and a more depressed society. Yeah. <laughs> Mm. Okay, let us go for a break and we'll come and wrap up here. Ladies and gentlemen, we are on the talk with Bafana Palani. We are speaking about mental health, we are speaking about depression, we are speaking about uh, chronic diseases and everything that is in our lifestyle. So wherever you are, comment, ask us questions. We will review the social media later on and revert back to you. Let us go on a break. Thank you. God is so amazing. Feel the heat. The Bible says that through his death on the cross, we are now reconciled with our Father. Forgive and you shall be forgiven. So wherever God takes us, we're just excited about it. As a child of God, where you are, you must have an hour of prayer. Feel the excitement. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> I believe that God is working right now. Feel the heat with Starset. Feel the heat. I love Adam Selman. The girls are really thin. I think it looks very glamorous from the outside. The life of a model in New York City. There is such cool prints. So many. You know, I'm buying this. Look at me and all the selfie sort of thing. Honestly, I didn't really know that was our job. It just didn't occur to me. Congratulations. Feel the excitement. Feel the heat with Starset. Welcome back to the talk. I'm with Morgan Perry. We are speaking about lifestyle, lifestyle diseases, how it affects our mental health, our physical health, and how it brings about chronic illnesses. So wherever you are, maybe you're wondering why so many diseases, why so many people killing themselves, why so many tragic things happening in our society. It all stems from health, it all stems from influence, from uh, social spaces, and many other things. That's the way the conversation as we speak. Uh, as we all know, Morgan Perry is is an academic so we are speaking about social issues but we also reflect on some facts there and there so follow us and comment on our social media platforms mr Amanda. sure yeah no 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 um so i think one other thing maybe you know and i think you'll be obviously the best person to just have this yeah. conversation with you know as i mentioned we just you know we're just moving social commentary right now yeah. you know to just throw these thoughts out there you know for everybody at home to start maybe just start thinking about them and start maybe looking at you know how um how this is playing out in their spaces yeah. you know uh but i think one of the things as well then is to think about <sighs> okay remember we've been we've just been using um soft life urbanization yeah. and westernization sort of yeah in one and i think maybe maybe for a deeper conversation we can maybe then start to in single them out and yeah. you know yeah. um separate out their their, their uh, individualistic char characteristics you know for, for for these two terms but for our, for the purposes of our, of our conversation then the next part you know, we've, we've spoken about you know um 
this sort of urban shift on like you know our physical health and the likes we've spoken about this sort of urban shift on our mental health you know then i'm, th I'm guessing from a social point of view the next sort of thing to then think about is this urban shift how that affects our spiritual space particularly as africans now obviously when we speak spiritual we're not necessarily talking about you know the particular domin domination or whatever but just religion in general not necessarily even religion just being you know as the spiritual the spiritual space okay. of a human okay. being you know and then just existing in that spiritual space and one thing about it is that i, I don't think africa per se or africans have always have been I, I believe we've been monotheistic yeah but i don't think we have been particularly religious right? religious yeah. before uh, uh before colonization but we're definitely spiritual spiritual but yeah. we're definitely spiritual yeah. so now the issue is that then how does this urbanization and, and westernization then affect our spirituality because we must remember that this then comes with an influx of certain ideas we can well we can argue whether these have been here or yeah. uh, before or after we can argue that that is neither here nor there but currently this movement how does that because i feel i feel like it sort of displaces the african yeah. in terms of his spiritual standing yeah. how do we then how, how do we reconcile the, the spiritual african with 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 this western movement mm. you know i think that's one of the things that we ought to also think about because i think that also then plays a role within our mental health you know because a displaced uh, person spiritually you know i think will not have peace <laughs> A person without peace is a person in, who's easily prone to depression and anxiety. Those are mental health issues, you know. And, and I think so for us as Africans moving forward and then continuing with, with this space, you know, this soft life, you know, this, this epi, you know, this peak of, of urbanization that uh, we might be moving into, we ought to now start to, we ought to start thinking as well about our spiritual, sp our, our, our spiritual placing. Yeah. And these things cannot be done passively. Mm. You know, we, we can't just passively you know, it just exists yeah. you know, and, and just expect that you know everything around us you know physical health mental health and spiritual health will just fall into place yeah you know my problem with african countries mm. is that there is no uh, traditions mm. uh, what has kept europe today mm. it is because of the traditions mm. and culture and spirituality mm. uh, those are those are some of the pillars mm. they revered so much that's why each and everything is in place mm. but when you come to Africa especially our governments we, we're just doing damage control in Europe they build statues and and you know if, mm. if there's someone extraordinary a healer Remember, a doctor yes, or yes, someone, yes, yes. they build mm. a, a whole institution around mm. that person mm. so that it's easier for people to to not forget where they come from yes. but in Africa it is something different we don't know mm. anyone especially mm. African people right. who are good in uh, whatever you know, and, and I think no, sorry, maybe yeah. we might also be digressing yeah. you know, one of the biggest issues for me has always been that um, I've, I've lo I love our, our, our history particularly in South yeah. Africa and our, particularly our liberation history yeah. you know our liberation struggle I love it but what has always hurt me is that the fact that what seems to be celebrated uh, more is, 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 is our liberation history. Yeah. As, as if our, we, we do not have a history except out of oppression, you know? Yeah. And of which we do. Yeah. We, we have a very deep and, and vast history. Yeah. Before white people were yeah. here, yeah. you know, our history cannot be determined by the, like by, 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 the, ex, by, by, by the entrance of the genesis of, yeah. of the white man into yeah. our lives. Yeah. It cannot. And currently, right now, you know, you look at the streets that are celebrated, you look at the movies that are made, yeah. you know, nothing has to do with the origin and, and, and just our, our and that, being. That directly affects the lifestyle and the society mm -hmm. we live in. Mm -hmm. Because people don't actually understand the society they live in. That's yeah. why we do whatever we want. Yeah. You know? When this one trends, we follow. We follow when this one, one trends, we follow. So <laughs> we're, we're, yes. we're a generation with no backbone, with no identity. So, and that results uh, in everything we do. Mm -hmm. So, but when it comes to the lifestyle, what are, what are some of the things that people must do or what are some of the things that we should look out for? And then yeah. maybe try to do that. Yeah. I think for me, I've always been a believer in, in the simple stuff, yeah. you know. Um, um, so firstly, it's, it's about activity, man. Yeah. Workout. Activity. Workout. Um, 
I've always been a fan of fresh air, sunlight, if you yeah. can. Make sure you get ample of those, like a lot of that, right? Particularly for mental health. Yeah. You know, I think you, you'll, you'll always underestimate the, the, the impact of just the sunlight, you know, sunshine and, and fresh air, particularly for mental health. Um, as I mentioned, um, working out and just maybe keeping active. But I think as well, one, we really need to get into a space where we look at our diet. You know, where we look at our diet and actually figure out and look into the certain effects of certain things that we mm. eat, right? And then and, and, and start to understand that, okay, fine, if I'm eating this much of this, you know, how much of this should I eat? Or should I be eating that much of this? Or should I, can I substitute for this? Understandably, as you would normally see, like a healthy lifestyle, particularly with regards to diet, is quite expensive. But I believe there are certain ways one can try to work around that, you know, particularly if you're looking at one's lifestyle holistically, you know, where you can try and do trade-offs, mm. you know, for more healthier lifestyles. Yeah. Um, water, water is always, water is, water is the building blocks of life, right? Water is the building blocks of life. Yeah. So I think that's one thing, you know, I found myself, I'd be at home and I'd be fighting with my grandmother about drinking water. And you realize that, oh no, actually, we don't drink water. Like, we don't. <laughs> people, people, we do not. Yeah. Like, you know, I had a friend of mine as well. Like, I had to force that boy, man. I remember I had to force him. Like, you know, it was a roommate of mine. I had to force him. Like, man, drink water now. You get this? Drink water. Leave, leave the cool drink there. Just drink water today. And thinking back, unless, I don't know, by some miracle, I hardly saw that boy drink water. Hardly. Hardly. And people do not even think about doing it. To them, life just continues and they move on. You know, so I think maybe that's one of those things, those sort of small little adjustments yeah. to life that could really go a long way you yeah. know at, at, at what age does uh, your bad uh, lifestyle decisions catch up with you hmm. yeah in truth like any at any point you know um, if you particularly if you're looking at, at chronic diseases yeah. um at, at any point um as i mentioned it's like it's like having a, a a car yeah you know it's like having a car Listen, you could probably go so many Ks without oil or so many Ks and it'll, it'll differ without from water. car to car, you know. Yeah. And that'll also be dependent on certain other, other aspects or other systems within the car and how those function, you know. Um, that, that'll, that'll, that'll sort of determine when this car as a whole sort of gives up. So it, it could be at any point. It really could genuinely be at any point. And that's one of those things as well about black people, you know. So you, you tell somebody, like, you're not supposed to eat that. like, well, I've been eating this for 20 years. <laughs> I <laughs> think it is I'm okay. <laughs> so it's very, also very hard to argue with somebody like that yeah. because unfortunately, the, you know, sometimes, unfo unless it's maybe like an allergic reaction, the human body does not always respond like that. Okay. You know, it's sometimes years and years of battering and battering with the human body. And when it gives out, now you just left with an issue. Yeah. You know, so I think that is the idea is that, you know, because I think also the fear is that if we say around 50, you're going to start some people like, okay, well, I have another 10 years to, <laughs> I have another 10 years of this. Yeah. So I think that might be the fear as well. But I think throughout any time, and I mean, we've, we've had, I remember I was in high school and I had a, um, a, a thingy, a, a thingy, a schoolmate die of a heart attack. You know, a young man die of a heart attack. Uh, we've heard of football players. Like, it, those things can, can yeah. happen at, at different yeah. parts in of your life at any time. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. There's no, I, I wouldn't say there's a particular age. Yeah. Although, I think maybe if you could maybe go into literature and look at yeah. um, life expectancies within sub-Saharan Africa, they, that's quite vast. Okay. You know, we, there's quite a lot of uh, literature in terms of yeah. where, 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 where we are at. In yeah. Terms of yeah. And then, now, we have uh, the young people. Mm -hmm. uh, who are assimilated into the society mm. that is actually not realistic mm. you know at what point do we draw the line you know b because you and I can sit here and talk about it because mm. we've had an opportunity to look at it from another mm. point of view but remember there are people who are swamped in it right. they don't even know what's right and what's wrong mm. and then one when it affects one it affects the next mm. person and affects everyone it is lifestyle uh, wow. lifestyle business mm. is big you mm. know mm. Uh, mm. it's mm. all about mm. business mm. you know uh, we follow people we follow yeah, trends, trends we follow, we follow, yeah, yeah. yeah. How, how 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 does one become aware of that situation hmm. you know i think yeah that's that's very that's very that's a very good question man. yeah because actually as you asked that then i started to think to myself that <laughs> obviously, yeah, and you know, it's almost like it's an epiphany, but obviously we were also so assimilated into a particular lifestyle yeah. because we were also once young and we grew up into a particular course, place yeah. of being. You know, and just as the young generation now will also yeah. grow into this sort of lifestyle that yeah. we might be, be setting up right now. 
Um, listen, I think it's 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 it's, it's always going to be um, a very 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 hard one to try um, and sort of bring consciousness, yeah. uh, conscious awareness, okay. yeah. right? So first, I think the first step, um, it'll always go to those who are in themselves willing to learn. Yeah. You know, it'll always be those who in themselves are really curious about their being, you know. And to those who are not really curious to their being, and that's the hope, hopefully the idea of such shows, you know, and okay. such conversations is that yeah. to those who weren't even curious that they can maybe hop onto something like that that might spark that curiosity, yeah. you know. But in truth, um, it's really normally people who are in themselves curious about their being that yeah. will normally go into finding out these sort of things that, okay, hold on, I can alter this about myself. You know, you think about it. You think about somebody who's trying to lose weight or whatever. Well, people are interested in that part of their okay. lives. Yeah. You know, they're interested in yeah, that. So they'll can, go. It doesn't just come from Yeah, yeah. you know, they're, they're interested in that part of their life. They're like, okay, this is how I, so let me try and do this, yeah. you know. So, yeah. Put some effort in Put it, some yeah. effort into yeah. that, yeah. Okay. Yeah, maybe maybe as, as we close, mm -hmm. we... Let's look at how we we have uh, failed some battles and mm. how we've won we've won some certain battles, yeah, yeah certain battles and and you know some people failed battles and they could not recover from mm. those things for an example issues of alcohol and mm. you know you know th there are some people who can drink for thirty sixty years mm. and nothing happens to them mm. uh, but there are people who would Just start now, and, yeah, alcohol yeah, poisoning alcohol and, yeah it it, mm. it doesn't yeah mm. so. And, and we have all the dynamics in the society. And mm. then, you know, uh, but when it comes to education, you need to bring facts. Mm. So, and, and we have an, uh, our society is becoming more and more agnostic. Mm. So you can't say, if you do this, this will happen to you. Mm -hmm. If you do this, this will happen, happen to, to you. you yeah. Because there, there's someone right next to me who is doing it and nothing mm, is happening, happening to, to them. them yeah. you, you understand? Yeah. So that's why I asked about the, 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 how, the academics mm. because people believe in facts people believe in truth mm. yeah and and now we believe in people who have researched mm. on things and stuff yeah yeah you are here today mm. i want you to give me an attitude that the society has towards academics because uh, for example if you open instagram and you see someone talking and then you listen because we a normal person believes that mm. and they follow Hashtag comes, yeah. and we're all trending. We're all <laughs> we trending. Follow that, yeah. yeah. And but uh, an, an academic, mm. even you can open a social media account. No, you will never have followers. You understand? I so, don't have followers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I want I want you to tell me how the attitude of the society towards hmm. that uh, that space that space. Is. Yeah. That, that's a very interesting one. But you know, I think as well, it might not also just be. Firstly, I, I think there is not a lot of recognition, yep. you know, except in, in situations where yeah. we are forced to then have to look yeah. to academics to say yeah. what happens, you yeah. know. But outside of those situations, I think there's not a lot of uh, recognition. But also, I don't think it's purely um, uh, the society's fault. Okay. You know, because I think um, ac ac academics as well, we are co sort of like notorious for also just trying to be in slight is isolation. Yes, you, know, you know, we, 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 we always just within our, you know, specialized fields of work that sometimes we, we really fail to remember that this needs to communicate to a broader Influence society, society yeah. you know, it needs to communicate to a broader society. So I think also that might be also the, the, the fault of academics that we need to try you know, once we get behind the screens and once we get out the lab codes and once we to try then whatever we've found out or whatever we, information we've uncovered, try our best to communicate it, you know, to our societies and communities. You know, we, we, we do a lot of work in communicating this work yeah. to each other as academics, yeah. you know, making sure that in, this, in the U.S. and whatever, understand the work that I've been doing in the work. But I think also maybe try put as much effort in communicating these, this information to our communities. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, they're the ones that need it most. Yeah. And you exist because of the society. Exactly. Yeah. But in, in, in your last words, yeah. in your last yeah. words, I, I want you to, 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 to locate yourself in, mm. in, in, in a busy society. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. A, locate yourself in a busy society. Because uh, truly speaking, the society is not looking for serious things you yeah, know? No, no, yeah no when no. someone starts <laughs> talking serious things oh, we just relax. yeah we just we just want that soft life yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's what we want and at the, at the end of the day for people to to find for people to find uh, the real thing the truth mm. they really have to 
uh, look towards that space as a valuable source of information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, the thing is, garbage is easy to find, to find yeah. than real things. Yeah. So in your last words, just locate yourself mm -hmm. in that space, and you know, yeah. Um, well, lo locating myself in that word. Listen, um, <laughs> it is a loud, it is a loud world, particularly yeah. in our generation now. Yeah. It is a loud world where we're constantly bombarded with information, information yeah. you know, with, with content yeah. to, to consume. It is a loud world. Yeah. It is a loud world. And I'm basically, if I were to locate myself in this loud world, um, I'm a typical researcher to some extent, okay. you know, who yeah. comes back into his cell yeah. and, you know, just looks at the issues that are, you know, affect, okay. affecting my community in that particular, yeah. in that particular state. But I will lie, also in, in the same breath of locating myself within that, I do, you know, sort of stop and sort of try and look at the, you know, the hustle and bustle, you know, yeah. and l try to look at the general trends of what is happening in society to just yeah. see where that puts me, yeah. you know, where that puts me in the future. And if not me, those would be in the future. Where would that put them? Because it's interesting, you know, to try yeah. imagine and just try have a peek. We just throw in a glance coming, of yeah. what, what, is, what, what is coming. I think yeah. that is very interesting. All right. Thank you so much, my guy. Commander. Thank you so much for coming through. You know I love being here with you, man. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the talk with Bafana Palani. We have come to the end of our program. We speak about things that we all know. We speak about education. We speak about social lives. We speak about religion. We speak about politics. Mm -hmm. We speak about everything that affects us. So if you are there looking, if you are there watching, please uh, comment on our social media spaces. Send mm -hmm. us emails. Contact us and let us know about everything that's happening in your communities. Stay tuned and be with us next time, same time, same place.